One of the best things about sports is the amount of endless possibilities. A different trade here or an alternative draft selection there can completely alter the history of the league. Let's take a look at the greatest what-ifs in NBA history. What if the Pacers kept Kawhi Leonard? On draft night in 2011, the Indiana Pacers had the 15th overall pick and weren't in the market for another small forward since Danny Granger was coming off a stellar season and the front office had already invested in a young wing the previous year in Paul George. But Indiana needed a point guard and took a liking to George Hill, a young lead guard who was coming up through the San Antonio Spurs system. So the Pacers made a trade. Indiana dealt the 15th pick, which turned out to be Kawhi Leonard, to the Spurs for Hill. Indiana is still kicking itself to this day for that trade. Leonard and George were dynamic for the Clippers this season, but they could have teamed up nine years earlier in Indiana. Imagine a world where Leonard, not Lance Stevenson, is going up against LeBron in the playoffs. The Pacers with Leonard and George could have been the perfect matchup for the Heat with James and Dwayne Wade. Hill was a solid point guard for Indiana, but he never made an all-star team, something Leonard has done four times. What if Shaq and Kobe got along? The relationship between Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal has always been complicated. The two often sparred when they were teammates with the Los Angeles Lakers, but also pushed each other to the top of the NBA, winning three NBA Finals in a row from 2000 to 2002. Bryant even won two rings after Shaq was traded to Miami, and Shaq won once in Miami without Kobe. But how many could the duo have won together? Back in 2014, Shaq said the duo could have won five or six rings if they stayed together. In 2019, Kobe said he would have won 12 rings if Shaq had gotten in the gym and stayed in shape. The Lakers still trail the Celtics 17 to 16 in total championships, but definitely would have passed Boston by now if Kobe and Shaq had stayed together. What if Michael Jordan never played baseball? After winning three straight championships with the Chicago Bulls from 1991 to 1993, Michael Jordan shocked the world. He retired, saying that he had nothing else to prove. Jordan then further surprised the sports world by signing a minor league baseball contract with the Chicago White Sox on February 7, 1994, stating that it was always his late father's dream for his son to play professional baseball. That season, Jordan appeared in 127 games for the Birmingham Barons, the AA affiliate of the White Sox hit three home runs, drove in 51 runs, and batted just 202. Then in March of 1995, Jordan shocked the world yet again and decided to quit baseball and rejoin the Bulls, who were in the midst of a season themselves. He immediately re-entered Chicago's starting lineup and appeared in 17 games, but the Bulls lost in the second round of the playoffs to the Magic. After a full offseason, Jordan was up to his old tricks again. He led the league in scoring in 1995 to 96, and the Bulls to the first of three straight championships. But what would have happened in 1994 and 1995 if Jordan didn't play baseball? Jordan ended his career with six championships, but could the Bulls have won eight in a row if he didn't retire? We'll never know. What if James Harden never got traded? The decision by the Oklahoma City Thunder to trade James Harden seemed ridiculous when it happened in 2012 and still seems crazy today. Harden was drafted by the Thunder third overall in 2009 and averaged 16.8 points per game off the bench for OKC in 2012. He was the perfect third banana to Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. But after a disappointing showing in the NBA Finals, Thunder GM Sam Presti traded Harden who Oklahoma City couldn't agree to a contract with, to the Houston Rockets for Kevin Martin, Jeremy Lamb, and two first-round picks. Once in Houston, Harden predictably blasted off. He averaged 26 points per game in 2013 and was selected to his first of what has been eight straight All-Star games. Harden, of course, won the MVP in 2017-18, too. And the Thunder? They never made it back to the finals with Westbrook and Durant. OKC then lost Durant to the Warriors in 2016 and dealt Westbrook to the Rockets to team up with Harden in 2019. At one point, the Thunder had three future MVPs on their roster. Now, they have zero. What if Tim Duncan signed with Orlando? Prior to the 2001 season, the Orlando Magic saved up a lot of cap space and tried to poach Tim Duncan, who had just won the NBA championship from the San Antonio Spurs. 
Duncan was reportedly close to signing with the Magic for six years and $67.5 million, but ultimately turned the deal down to stay with San Antonio. Bruce Bowen, who was Duncan's teammate in San Antonio, said he turned down the Magic because Orlando's coach at the time, Doc Rivers, wasn't going to let Duncan's family fly on the team plane. The Magic had some playoff success over the next decade, but the Magic missed out on a franchise-altering signing. If Duncan joined the Magic, he would have teamed up with a prime Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady, who Orlando went on to acquire that summer. A big three of Duncan, Hill, and McGrady would have made the Magic an instant title contender and potential dynasty. Instead, Orlando still hasn't won an NBA title. What if Carmelo Anthony was drafted to the Pistons? Coming off an Eastern Conference Finals appearance in 2003, the Detroit Pistons were fortunate enough to still have a chance at a top draft pick as a result of a previous trade. They were awarded the number two selection, and since everybody knew LeBron James was going first overall, the Pistons had their pick from the rest of the draft. The Pistons selected seven-foot Serbian center Darko Milicek second overall. At the time, the move didn't seem completely out of left field. Darko was a prized prospect, and no one had seen a big man with his combination of size and speed come through the draft in some time. But Darko wasn't long for the NBA. He spent two and a half seasons in Detroit before he was dealt to Orlando. Darko bounced around to Memphis, New York, Minnesota, and Boston before he was out of the league by 2013. Boy, did the Pistons mess that one up, because the 2003 draft was absolutely loaded with talent. Carmelo Anthony went third overall to Denver, Chris Bosh went fourth to Toronto. Dwayne Wade went fifth to Miami. Any of those players could have taken the torch from the Pistons' aging core and kept Detroit's status as a contender preserved for the next several years. Instead, Detroit fell from relevancy after Chauncey Billups, Richard Hamilton, Tayshaun Prince, Rasheed Wallace, and Ben Wallace moved on. What if Derrick Rose never got hurt? By the time the 2012 playoffs rolled around, Derrick Rose was arguably the NBA's brightest star at just 23 years old. He had already won the MVP a year earlier, and it looked like his Chicago Bulls would be the Miami Heat's fiercest rivals in the East for the next several seasons. Rose was not only one of the fastest guards in the league, but among the NBA's most athletic and explosive too. But in game one of the Bulls' first round series against the Philadelphia 76ers, Rose tore his ACL, which ended his playoff run early and caused him to miss the entire next season. Unfortunately for Rose, his first ACL injury was the first of many ailments that cut his prime short. Rose tore his meniscus in his right knee in November of 2013, which ended another season. In February of 2015, Rose tore his meniscus in his right knee again. After averaging 20 points per game in three straight seasons from 2009 to 2012, Rose never eclipsed the 20 point per game barrier again. To this day, Rose's Bulls are still looking for their first post-Jordan championship. What if Minnesota drafted Stephen Curry? The Minnesota Timberwolves passed on Steph Curry in the 2009 draft, not once, but twice. First, Minnesota took 18-year-old Ricky Rubio fifth overall, and then Johnny Flynn sixth with Curry still on the board. If the Wolves drafted Curry, their 13-year playoff drought, which ended in 2018, would have ended a whole lot sooner. But what if the Warriors never got Curry? Golden State made the playoffs one time over an 18-year span from 1995 to 2006, but then took off once Curry ascended to his status as one of the NBA's top players. There's no Splash Brothers without Curry, and probably no Chase Center, the state-of-the-art arena that Golden State opened this season. There's no three rings in five years from 2015 to 19, either. What if Len Bias lived? If Len Bias had lived, he may have changed the course of NBA history. That's just how good Bias was. The six foot eight long-armed forward averaged a monster 23 points and seven rebounds during his senior season at the University of Maryland, which was enough for the Boston Celtics to make Bias the second overall pick in the 1986 draft. The Celtics were thrilled with their draft haul, and one of Boston's scouts at the time even compared Bias to Michael Jordan. But just two days after he was drafted, Bias attended a college party at his alma mater, and in the early hours of the morning, died due to a cocaine overdose. Bias's story is an incredibly sad one, but his talent was undeniable. He ran the floor like few did in the 90s, 
and had a combination of skill, size, and athleticism that would have made him a future all-star in the NBA. Baez could have taken the reins from Bird and continued the Celtics dynasty for another decade. What if Chris Paul became a Laker? Chris Paul was a member of the Los Angeles Lakers for about an hour in December 2011, when the Lakers and Hornets agreed on a blockbuster three-team trade that would have paired the game's best floor general with its best two-guard in Kobe Bryant. But NBA Commissioner David Stern, who was acting as the controlling owner of the Pelicans at the time, since the franchise was in the midst of finding a buyer, vetoed the deal. Less than a week later, Paul was traded, but to the other Southern California team, the Clippers. It was a turn of events that sent both squads in vastly different directions. For the first time, the Clippers were relevant for all the right reasons and had a dynamic point guard to play with Blake Griffin. The Lakers never truly recovered from the Knicks deal as Bryant's career faded. The Lakers made the conference semifinals in 2011 and 2012, but lost in the first round in 2013. Los Angeles then missed the playoffs for six straight seasons. If CP3 had become a Laker, Kobe could have added a few more rings to his collection.